What's up everyone, Miguel Quiles here, and today we're gonna to talk about five common portrait mistakes and how you could fix them. If you're here for the first time and you're wanting to learn and grow in the art of portrait photography, then consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the bell to be notified as soon as my latest videos post up. I upload videos here every week sharing my experience with you all in the hopes that you learn at least one thing that will help you in your creative journey. With that out of the way, let's look at five common mistakes that people make with their portrait photography and some tips on how you can fix them. Starting off my list, one of the big mistakes I see often is missing focus. Listen, there's nothing more heartbreaking for a portrait photographer than uh, taking what looked like a beautiful image and then zooming into it at 100% to realize that you miss the focus. Whether you're taking a portrait with an interchangeable lens camera or even your cell phone, it's important to make sure that your portrait subject is sharp and in focus. Cameras nowadays have sophisticated focusing tools to help ensure this doesn't happen as often, yet I still see portraits all the time where the eyes are soft because the camera focused on the tip of the nose or the person's hair. It creates what I call the beer goggle effect, where viewers looking at the image think their vision is blurry when it's actually the photo itself. One easy tip to make sure that this doesn't happen to you is to use flexible spot focus and always make sure that your focal point is on your subject's eyes. If you're a Sony shooter, you can simply set your camera to continuous autofocus and enable the eye autofocus option so that the camera finds and retains the eye in focus throughout your shoot. I would also recommend that you take a few photos, maybe uh, 10 or so starting out, and then play them back and zoom into the eyes to make sure they are razor sharp and in focus. If they aren't, then making the needed adjustments at that point will ensure that you don't end up having soft shots at the end of your portrait session. If you're taking photos in available light, set your drive mode to continuous so that you reduce the possibility of having out of focus shots. In at number four on my list of common portrait mistakes is poor composition. I think we've all seen images where we struggle to find what the photographer actually wants us to look at within the frame, or maybe where they chose to shoot the image in a portrait composition when it would have been better as a landscape. These are just some of the things that can ruin the composition of your portraits that you should keep in mind as you take your images. An easy way to fix this is to enable grid lines within your viewfinder. That is, of course, if your camera gives you this option. Once you've done this, you'll want to line up your subject's eyes around the top line of the rule of thirds grid. I use this trick in nearly every portrait session, and I recommend you try it too. If your images may be published at some point, leave a little bit of extra space in case uh, they need to be cropped afterwards. Coming in at number three on my list is what I call Photoshop gymnastics, or as I lovingly call it, polishing turds. The overall idea is that photographers end up spending a lot of time trying to fix an image that isn't worth the effort. This common mistake happens when a photographer takes a photo that has poor lighting, bad composition, or maybe poor styling overall. Rather than addressing those things at the time of the session and fixing them, they instead decide to try and apply every Photoshop trick in the book, like applying presets, adding overlays, maybe even a little bit of selective coloring in there, all in an attempt to make a bad photo look a little bit better. Don't get me wrong, we all take a bad photo every so often. Rather than trying to throw every post-processing trick at your image, simply take it as a lesson learned and keep it in mind as something to fix or avoid in your next portrait session. Get this idea out of your mind that you'll fix it in post and take the time to make sure that every element within your portrait has a purpose and looks the very best that it can. Now at number two on my list, and this one might be a little bit controversial, a common mistake that you might be making is adding watermarks to your images. Take a look at the top photographers out there and you'll be hard pressed to find any images that they've taken with watermarks applied. Many beginner photographers believe that they have to add watermarks so that it protects their images and possibly lets interested parties know that they took the shot. The reality is that no matter how beautifully designed their logo or their watermark might be, it's almost always going to take away from how awesome their images might be. And if you're thinking that it's protecting your images from would-be thieves, the truth is that they can easily take out your watermarks within seconds in Photoshop. Instead of placing your logo or watermark on the image itself, utilize the description boxes on social media to add your information in the event someone wants to contact you to work with you. 
You could also embed your information into the metadata of your images using programs like Lightroom or Capture One, which will provide way more information to potential clients than a logo or watermark ever will. At the end of the day, nothing beats registering your images over at copyright.gov, so make sure that you're doing that as part of your process. At number one on my list of common portrait photography mistakes, we have over retouching. I can't tell you the number of images that I've looked at in the last few years that probably looked absolutely stunning out of the camera and were ruined in post-production by going overboard with retouching. Abusing techniques like frequency separation, dodge and burn, inverted high pass, and many others will leave the people in your portraits looking like plastic dolls rather than humans. It's really easy to go overboard once you sit down at your computer to start working on your portrait. So my best advice is to only target the areas of the portrait that need to be adjusted and keep as much of the original skin texture and color as possible. I found that a makeup artist for both male and female clients is worth their weight in gold and will help you get great results baked right into your raw files. All of the retouching techniques out there can be used in moderation to give you a subtle improvement to your portraits, but if you're thinking you went too far, you probably did. I think we've all been guilty of one or maybe all of these mistakes at some point in our journey as portrait photographers, so don't feel bad if you've done any of these things that I mentioned on the list. The good news is that with a few small changes, you can make a big difference with your work. Do you have any common mistakes that I didn't cover on my list? Let us all hear about your experience in the comments section below. And also remember, if you like this video, please leave a like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're into portrait photography and just photography in general. And check you guys out in the next video.